IGNCA has created an academic niche in both at the national and the international levels through its numerous publications, conferences, exhibitions, multimedia presentations, ethnographic films, DVDs, and digital database on the art and culture. Its programs, its programs in the Southeast, on Southeast Asia, China, and Eurasia have been pioneering in many ways. Many ways to make the year-long Silver Jubilee celebration at the center, an international conference of rock art is being organized in December this year. And you'll be glad to know that UNESCO has already recognized Bhim Mitak as a World Heritage Site. I believe that the publication of the IGNCA retrospects of 25 years would be a popular showcase of our culture, heritage, and would provide an opportunity to us to create greater awareness amongst our countrymen. I once again congratulate the IN. IGNCA on its 25th anniversary and look forward to the institution's involvement in developing programs to further and forward the vision of Srimati Indra Gandhi. Thank you, ma'am. A publication has been brought out on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee celebrations of IGNCA. This publication gives a brief tour of the resources and activities of IGNCA as well as details of the publications. I now request the Honorable Minister for Culture, Srimati Chandresh Kumari Katochti, to release this publication and hand it over to Honorable Rashtrapati Ji. IGNCA has been documenting lifestyles, cultures, intangible heritage fairs, festivals. These have been aired on Doordarshan. A selection of 11 DVDs have been brought out on the occasion. I request the Honorable Minister for Culture to release these DVDs and present them to the Honorable President of India. the Honorable Rashtrapati Ji to please address the gathering. Srimati Chandresh Kumari, Minister Kache, Sri A.K. Antoni, Minister Defense, Sri Salman Khurshid, Minister External Affairs, Sri Chinmay R. Gehrakan, President Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts, Dr. Kabila Vatsal, Trustee, IGNCA, Srimuthi Dipali Khanna, Member Secretary, IGNCA, Excellencies, Heads of Nations, Ladies and Gentlemen. I am extremely happy to inaugurate the Silver Jubilee celebrations of Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts established 25 years ago in the memory of Srimati Indira Gandhi. The center seeks to fulfill her dream and vision for India as a strong nation where civilization plural values dignity of life, respect for nature, and development go hand in hand. The arts and all their manifestations were dear, dear to Mrs. Gandhi. Once she observed, and I quote a few words, we know that India is what she is because art was alive here as a part of the very life of the people, 
unquote. She further stated that there indeed can be no civilization without music, dance, and arts, for one is not fully, vibrantly alive without them. But she also envisaged heritage as something to be not merely admired and drawn upon, but also to be studied in depth as a means of gaining a fuller understanding of societies and their cultural const <coughs> constructs. The IGNCA was accordingly established as a center that would encompass the study of all forms of art in all their dimensions. The center was inaugurated by her illustrious son, late Sri Rajiv Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India, who emphasized, and I quote him, the center has tremendous challenges. It has to use the most modern technology to protect and preserve the ancient, unquote. He was also the founder trustee of the IGNCA, along with some of the other eminent personalities like Sri R. Venkatraman, P. V. Narsimarao, H. Y. Sardaprasad. The conceptual framework of this center thus took in its ambit all the diverse forms of arts and endeavored to study them through a holistic and multidisciplinary approach. It challenged the prevailing binary approach which separated the traditional from the modern, oral from the written, urban from the rural, and folk from the classical. Given the times, it was a paradigm shift in the existing epistemological models in the study of art and culture. The center has been looking at the fundamental concepts of Indian thought and culture as articulated in the textual traditions and bringing out lexicons and glossary of these concepts. It has compiled, edited, and translated some of the most significant texts of Indian arts and aesthetics, living traditions, region, and community-specific studies, lifestyles, and cultural expressions of small societies, their wisdom, traditions, arts and crafts, and belief systems have been studied and documented with a view to link them to issues of cultural identity, education, conflict resolution, and sustainable development. IGNCA is also providing creative platform for fostering dialogue between the arts and current ideas of philosophy, science and technology to bridge the gap in the understanding between modern sciences, arts and culture. Some of the brightest minds from diverse fields have over the time been associated with the work of IGNCA. The center has also launched major programs on Southeast Asia, East Asia, Eurasia, and collaborated with several institutions and state libraries around the world to bring together scattered manuscripts, slides, photographs, etc. I would like to recall here what Mrs. Indira Gandhi observed once. She stated, and I quote, if you wish to know something about India, you must empty your mind of all preconceived notions of what you have read or heard. India is different and exasperating. You will not find any of your formal levels useful. India is many and it is one. It has incredible diversity, yet a bond in unity that stretches way back into 
unwritten history, unquote. IGNCA, carrying forward that thought process, has been the forebearer of many new initiatives. The center was the first to use modern and day information technology to document, preserve, and revitalize culture and cultural studies. It has held theme-based exhibitions on space, time, aka, prakriti, rhythm, and several others. Its publications on fundamental texts and concepts of Indian thought reflect the center's endeavor to develop new approaches so necessary for developing a more meaningful understanding of Indian culture. Today, as India stands at the threshold of substantive economic progress and scientific development in the role of culture as a balancing factor between progress and the inner needs of the individual, between the spiritual quest and material aspirations, between technological advancement and the need to maintain ecological parity cannot be overemphasized. The role of the institution such as IGNCA becomes more significant in this context. Institutions like IGNCA constantly need <coughs> to discover and reinvent new ways of establishing a creative and meaningful dialogue between different stakeholders and adding cultural dimensions in the developmental debate. Recognizing the stellar contribution of IGNCA over the years, I am happy to note that the President's Secretariat is presently collaborating with IGNCA for undertaking a multi-volume project on various aspects of the Rashtrapati Bhavan archaeological history, its making, its art, and cultural artifacts, I wish the project all success. I also wish IGNCA the very best in its academic pursuits and hope that its network with the universities and institutions, both in India and abroad, would grow further. I am confident that IGNCA, under the able guidance of its trust, would continue forward its journey for excellence. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai. We thank Honorable Rashtrapati Ji.